All right, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are going to discuss 2A today, and I would like to guide you through this lesson a little bit and tell you what I expect from you. And uh, today we will just work with student, uh, student's book. Now, if you look at the exercise one, they ask you to look at photos A to E, and they ask you, would you enjoy these activities? Why or why not? Here, you can just write it for me, all right? You write it somewhere uh, somewhere in your file. You can just write it actually in here on your book and just take a picture later. Then uh, I will leave uh, these two listening files here. It will be 1.15 and 1.16. You will need to use them to finish uh, some exercises here. So if we go back, what they want you to do in exercise two, is match the two of the nouns below with each photo. So look at the photos here, all right, and find the, the right places in the right picture. So what can you see in the picture and uh, match them with the correct photo. Then you can listen to it and you can check, all right, uh, but if you don't want to, it's okay. You can just look at the, fo look at the photos and uh, find the correct words. Let me help you with the landscapes here because sometimes the pronunciation can be quite strange. Now we have the word cave, cave, uh, then we have cliff, we have desert, and be careful because the word desert can uh, have the different spelling as well. We can say desert, and desert is something that you eat, right? It has double S, and then if you use this word, then it's desert, and it means something completely different. This is your task to find what they mean, all right, these words. I don't want to tell you here right now. You need to self-study right now. And now we have the word forest, and then we have hill, lake, mountain, ocean, river, rocks, shore, stream, valley, volcano, and waterfall. All right. In my opinion, uh, there should be a few more words that are not in the book, but I want to tell you. So the first one, the first word we should learn, tundra. Tundra. Uh, also in Czech, we, we say tundra. I don't know if you've heard this word before, but you can tell me later. Now, tundra is a very large area of land in the north, and it's the place which is very cold, and there are no trees. Trees do not grow, and the ground below the surface is permanently frozen. So you can imagine this kind of uh, landscape in Iceland or in Siberia in northern Russia. So a place where you can find fox, bears, all right? And something grows there, but you will not find trees, all right? It's already too cold. Uh, and on the other hand, if you go to very hot areas where trees don't grow too, because it's simply too dry, then you will find savanna, all right? Now, uh, savanna is, would be in American English, savanna, and then uh, the spelling is a little bit different. There's no H at the end. So this one is uh, tundra is in the cold areas, Sav savanna would be found in hot areas, and it's too dry, so not much grows there. You can imagine the gazelles and antelopes and lions there, right? So this is the place where they live. And then we have swamps. Swamp is also a kind of landscape. This is uh, usually found nearby forests. And this is an area that is very wet, right? You can find crocodiles and alligators there if you are unlucky to see them there. Now, <laughs> there's also a different word, jungle. You can also find jungles, all right? A tropical forest in which trees and plants grow very closely together. Now, a jungle is different from a forest. Jungle is a forest that is very old, and it is the place where it rains a lot. So you will find it in very hot areas. All right? Now, don't forget to check the difference between the word stream and river. All right? I want you to self-study for this. Uh, I will give you some feedback if need be. Then... Uh, you can also use the word, we have the word shore, you can use the word coast as well, right? Coast. Uh, these two words are basically the same. 
All right? Coast is more likely to be used for sea and ocean, you know, where ocean and the land meets, uh, meet. And then when you use the word shore, shore is more common for lakes, all right? But I mean, if you use the word shore for the sea, it's uh, nothing too serious, all right? So shore and coast are basically the same. But honestly, I would not say the word coast if I talked about a lake. All right, so just be careful there. Coast is just for uh, where ocean and the sea meet the land. All right, when you're finished with exercise two, like this, then uh, have a look at exercise three. Over here, before you begin, I would like you to put these adjectives into their opposites, all right? So we have dark, and what is the opposite of dark? We have deep, what's the opposite of deep? You can use dictionary here, guys, don't worry, all right? And when you're done with that, look at exercise four and put the adjectives to these uh, uh, words over here so that they make logical sense, all right? For example, dark forest, dark cave, dark valley, but I cannot say uh, dark stream, dark waterfall, dark lake. Uh, I can't, all right? This doesn't make much sense. So uh, be careful to use those adjectives properly, all right? And again, you can write it over here. You can write uh, on your book, it, but use pencil, yeah, it might be better. Now, if we continue, then you have a listening exercise here. I will leave this listening, uh, listening file on Google Classroom, so you can download it. You can listen to four adverts and uh, match three of them with photos A to E. All right, so they will describe some kind of holiday, probably and you need to match it with the correct picture and uh, how people spend their time. Now, uh, if then you listen again, and I would like you to finish uh, the exercise, uh, the exercise six, with the correct uh, prepositions, all right? And there can be along, behind, beside, down, and so on, and put them to the correct place. Uh, now, there's one example. Kayak across icy lakes and shallow rivers. So across would be you go across, yet to něco. Then uh, icy lakes, přes, takže kajakem napříč nebo přes uh, ledová jezera, a, nebo i ledovcová by se bychom mohli přeložit. A máme shallow rivers, mělké řeky. All right? Now, Speaking of uh, ice, uh, I want to tell you something more about this. We have the word iceberg, as you see in the picture here, right? This is an iceberg. That means you will find it on top, on the surface of uh, an ocean, all right? A large mass of ice that floats in the sea. Important, it floats, okay? And then we have another word, and that is glacier, all right? And now a large mass of ice which moves slowly. So glacier is on land and iceberg is in the sea. Okay? Don't forget, guys, because, you know, in Czech we have the word ledovets. And ledovets can be, uh, you know, in the sea, it can be on land. But in English we have two words, glacier and then we have uh, iceberg. So be careful. You feel free to use it uh, in uh, later in the exercise. All right. Fine, fine. So please finish this, guys, in exercise six. Let's just recycle a little bit of uh, your knowledge. So we have the, the expression when I want to describe uh, existence of something, that something exists, then I say there is or there are. And that depends on whether what I'm talking about is countable or uncountable. There is is for countable nouns that are singular or uncountable nouns. And we use there are for plural nouns that are obviously countable. Now, uh, there is a forest, so I can count how many forests. And then there are trees, right? And then there is some snow. I cannot count the word snow. So snows doesn't exist as a word. So it cannot have plural. And that's why I must say there's so snow. And if I want to say how much, I can say there is much snow. There is some snow. There is a little snow. That's it. So guys, over here, use there is or there are. Don't forget to remember whether it is countable or not. And then match them with the photos. All right. So uh, put it to the right photo again. And then the last one, number eight, work in pairs. Uh, unfortunately, you can't. 
but I would like you to describe a typical landscape in your country. Uh, look, we have some landscapes here, but uh, I would say look at the whole world, okay? So you can practice more. Uh, you can actually write it down. I think uh, when it comes to speaking, I will give a, I will give you a presentation, all right? I will choose a few people randomly and I will give them a presentation about, uh, about 2A. They will have to describe, bring pictures and describe places around the world and describe the landscape. So now you can use as much vocabulary from this lesson as you can. And remember to use there is, there are. So uh, look at the pictures and describe the pictures for yourself. That would be the best to speak for yourself. But for me, please write it down somewhere. Uh, describe, uh, describe places around the world. Think of, you know, places like Russia, Africa, or our country and South America. Think about what kind of uh, landscapes they have there and then describe them with there is or there are. All right. So, gentlemen, to summarize, I want you to finish exercises 1 to 8. For exercises 5, 6 and uh, 2, you will find the listening file on Google Classroom. All right? Just, uh, just, below, uh, just below the instructions. Okay? If you have any problem here, feel free to ask me. Uh, I will also announce uh, some people, probably two. I'll announce two people who have to... Uh, give me a presentation about this. They will have to choose uh, some landscapes around the world, find a picture online, and make a presentation, all right, where you will put uh, these pictures together. And then you will describe what you see in those pictures, what kind of landscapes, all right? So I will choose two people randomly, but everybody must finish exercises one to exercise eight, all right? Thank you very much, gentlemen. And in the following lesson, uh, we will continue with the same same lesson, but on, on workbook, okay? This will be in workbook. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.